Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here at HP Discover 2015. This is SiliconANGLE, Media is the Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signals from the noise. Join the conversation, go to hpdiscover.social, the new engagement hub, trending stories, trending hashtags, crowd chats. Uh, that's where you get the live keynotes. Meg Whitman will be on shortly and all the other CUBE videos are there. Our next guest is Colin Mahoney, SVP, General Manager of the HP Software Group for Big Data. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to Thank see you. Thank you, yeah, great to see you guys. Great year. Great to be here, yeah, yeah, wow, it's yeah. been that long. Um, Amazing. What's new, SVP, GM, what's going on in Big Data in software? A um, lot of changes going on within HP right now, so you know, give us the update. What's yeah. happening with your group, products, team, execution? Yeah, so great, great things happening all around. Um, you know, I'm a product guy, so I love talking about products and everything that we're doing around the Haven platform, whether it's our Haven on Hadoop, Haven in the Enterprise, or Haven on Demand. You'll hear us talk about all three of those aspects a lot. They're all really important to us. A lot of our customers are going through that transition from on-premise to cloud. They obviously don't want to compromise and give up any of the functionality that they're getting on premise. So a lot of what we've been doing is how do we help them in that transition from prem to cloud, specifically around the analytic platform, as well as compliance, regulatory reasons that we need to make sure that that data is secure from the moment it's created to when it's stored, when it's analyzed, and ultimately uh, served out, but lots going on. You know, the, a theme that you'll continue to hear about is the data-driven enterprise, and there's really, I think, the last probably since we got together, just so much more of a focus on the business outcome. You know, as as a whole, uh, especially of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, it's really just thinking about how do we deliver those that business value. When you think about our mm -hmm. conversion infrastructure our software, you've got to bring it all yeah. together and big data is where it comes we together give the you, most. We got to give you props, we were on earlier with Jason Newton and um, you know, we were talking about Hadoop and Dave was speculating, hey, you know, Hadoop was going to be this big, only, this big market never really happened. I'm like, well, Colin Mahoney predicted that three years ago, that Hadoop would be great, but not the only game in town. That became Haven, the vision continued, you said that on theCUBE, uh, but now the digital transformation is data-driven enterprise. Okay, check the box, big data gets props there. Yep. But the other groups too, hybrid infrastructure, digital yep. experience, uh, digital enterprise, and work, workspace productivity are all big data too. They are. So are you sprinkling the big data like uh, <laughs> arrow in throughout this, the, the, the company's different business units? I mean, what's going on with big data? Because you're also horizontal. Yeah, so I think big data permeates everything in, in an organization. And, and the good news is, I didn't tackle it. Um, you know, if you look at the portfolio they that we came have, and dipped into the trough themselves. Well, well it's always been there. I, I think yeah. a lot of these products, like one of the things that um, was probably my greatest realization was when when we took over this larger portfolio of big data products and we created the big data group in HP Software. So many of our products are storing massive volumes of data, and you know, I thought just coming from the Vertica side, well, I know what big data is. I've seen petabytes and petabytes. But the truth is that a lot of our customers with some of the largest data sets are our compliance customers, our archiving customers. And so I think what you're seeing is the data's always been out there and what we bring to the table is we know how to deal with compliance, we know how to deal with security end to end, we also know how to do the analytics. And so a lot of what we've spent time on is not just creating new products, which we continue to do, but how do we bring those technologies together and make sure that big data and the analytic capabilities that we have are permeating everything. And not even just software at HP, external partners as well as our hardware infrastructure as well. So it's a couple times you've now sort of alluded to governance related things, and we've talked about this before, but you got these big data projects spinning up all over the place, many of them don't give any return, and few of them have any kind of governance structure. So this seems to be a big theme. Um, what's going on there, and is it becoming a, a, a lucrative business for HP? I think, well, it, it, it's always been a great business for us just working with data, looking at the lineage of the data, who has access to that data, mm -hmm. uh, the controls that you have to put around that data, the policy management around that data. Um, that's always been a great business for us. And I think what we're seeing now is, in some of the new frontier of big data, um, they're now starting to think about that stuff. They're now starting to say, wow, who does have access to this? We have a massive farm of information. We know 
what information is in there? Do we know where it came from? Do we know who has access to it? And so I think there's a natural progression there for the folks that are in the new frontier who've been doing some great analytics. They're now adding a lot of the compliance capabilities and for our compliance customers, they're now adding some of the great analytic capabilities. So um, I think it works well both ways. So you've always been we met on a plane flying yeah, out to I remember that. Discover, yeah. and, and I was picking your brain about Hadoop. You, you knew a lot about it then, and you're even deeper into it now. Um, and as John said, you know, the world is not just Hadoop. Somebody said to us the other day, Hadoop's done. <laughs> you know, it's over. Spark, real time, you know, okay. So I wanted, I said, I got to ask Colin. I he comes on. Yeah. What, what's the state of Hadoop now? You guys got the relationship with Hortonworks. Yep. ODP now is yep. this new, new kind of thing in, 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 in the, the marketplace. Give us the update there. I don't, so so first of all, I do not think Hadoop is dead. I think what Hadoop has done, and I you know I think we talked about this a little bit last time, um, is Hadoop is morphing. And, and I think that's a very good thing for the market because I think what this is saying is there are so many needs around data that the market has. So whereas Hadoop might have started off as MapReduce, and while you know we may have been negative on some of the MapReduce aspects of it, it's really burgeoned into a lot of different things. It's storage, it's all sorts of analytic processing capabilities. SQL on Hadoop now is a killer app. Well, you know, we've been <laughs> on not, that market. It's not a pure play Hadoop, it's, 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 it's a variant that's been developed. It is, and, and I think the promise, that the, or the hope maybe, the promise that everybody holds out for is, can you get the workload management? If you look at initiatives learn and some of the other things, because that ultimately is going to be the greatest challenge, right? Everybody wants a single place to put all their data, have every workload on that data and manage it. Um, easier said than done, but that's actually an area where HP brings an incredible amount from a hardware perspective especially, as well as software. That's an area I think we can really differentiate and we are differentiating. So I don't think by any means, but I think a thousand flowers are blooming in, the, in that ecosystem and it's taking this brand that is it Hadoop. It brings up a great, so, I just want to follow up on that, because when I heard this individual say that, I said, I, two people came to mind, you and Doug Cutting. <laughs> I said, I got to ask Doug what he thinks, but, but, so, but you're here, so I'll ask you. So how is it that Hadoop was able to, to morph and accommodate? It feels like it's an architectural thing that it was designed in order to do that, properly to do that. Is that right, or is it just ecosystem sort of forcing that? No, I think it's a combination. So I think there's a couple of factors at play. I think number one is, it was designed to store and scale data massively. Um, it was also designed to, to be open from a framework perspective so that you can have a lot of processing paradigms on top of the data, right? So I think that invites an ecosystem to try a lot of different things. I also think another force at play is that from a marketing perspective, we all know how difficult big data marketing is. So for all these small independent companies, a lot of them VC backed, rallying around something so that projects could take on that identity has been really important to that ecosystem. Um, and you know, you can you can question profitability models and, and all those sorts of things, and some of them will take time probably to play out. But I so I think there's a number of reasons why it's 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 morphed in this way, and I think it'll continue to morph. And our perspective on it is. You know, we love that ecosystem. We have a lot of products that make it better and help manage it, help create analytics on it, like the SQL and Hadoop offering that I mentioned. So, you know, we're going to continue to work with those vendors and partner up so that we can help in that, in that ecosystem. Colin, I want to talk about uh, developers. And one glaring kind of hole here at HP Discover is it's not a lot of drones, it's a business conference. Yep. Customers and HP together. Yep. Um, but you start to look at those pillars of transformation for the new style of business as Meg will announce, I mean, it's going to be developer-centric. All developer-centric. So, you had a very successful event um, that you put on with Chris yeah. Allen and team, the big data, vertical end user conference. You yep. had big names there, Facebook, Zynga, and you know, we interviewed them all at theCUBE. That was a different, that was, you went rogue on that. I mean, and, and, but you're doing it again. Well, they supported us. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, not rogue. I mean, it was yeah. not conventional no, given the mean. HP cadence of their events. Yeah. But you saw a need early with developers, and that's because you were in the throes of big data with Hadoop and open source and whatnot. So now HP seems to be going down that path. Can you comment, do you, are they going down that path? Absolutely. And will it be kind of a developer conference in the future, and how would that look, given the makeup of the new messaging and the new transformation? Yeah. So, um, yeah, great what, question. What would it look like? So, so we are having our, our uh, big data, conf the developer conference in Boston again this August, so uh, early August, so the answer to that is absolutely yes. 
Uh, we're hoping it's bigger than ever. And the answer to HP and our commitment to developers is also 100% yes. And I think HP has always been committed to developers. You maybe just don't hear about it as much as you hear about it with some other communities, but it's something that we're growing in so many different ways. Not just having developer conferences, but if you look at the meetups that we're doing, all the activities, the hackathons, everything is really geared towards this community building, whether it's Haven or Helion, a lot of the communities that we have, it is working. We absolutely, if you look at the numbers of developers that we have um, in our community, on our platforms, absolutely working. And, and that, frankly, is what makes us tick. I mean, we, we all want to aspire and sell to the CIO and believe that you can do these massive deals to the CIO, and you can, but you, you need grassroots. You, you can need do both. both. You can do exactly. top down and, and that's what you need and to do. bottom up. You absolutely need both, because when the CIO or the VPs in these companies go to their teams and they say, what do you think of this? They've got to be jumping up and down saying, we need more, more, more. And they only get that if you're giving them the community yeah, to I mean, try. I mean, first of all, I mean, I'm not saying we're Google, Apple, Envy, but you look at Google I.O., amazing production. They had satellites all around meetups. You look at Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference coming up. Now granted, that's Android. You get, it's kind of kind of consumer flair to it. Um, but I'm looking at you guys, I was just talking to Bobby Patrick, cloud has major developer momentum. Absolutely. Right? You guys with Vertica and Big Data has developer momentum. A hardware company <laughs> transforming into a software company with hardware is the new HP. That's what, I mean, I'm oversimplifying it, and it's not on message, but that's really kind of what's happening, right? So I'm just, I'm just trying to tease out where that developer, I mean, you, if you're winning the developers, you got to put a big tent together. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, so, uh, yeah, I can't really speak to whether, whether and when that make happens. Make a decision, will you? Yeah, we, but, but, but I think, what, <laughs> but part of, the, part of the power of the developer communities, too, is monolithic is not always a great thing to developers, right? Yeah. The people that are interested in analytics may not be interested in cloud. They probably are, but, but as an example. And so, we want to give them a vehicle to get everything they need for what they're focused on, but also make it really easy for them to get everything else they're interested yeah. in. And so I think if you look at that progression that we're doing with Haven, with Helion, where we're putting a lot of developer effort, there's great things coming together there. And I think the developers are the ones that are telling us yeah. this is really useful. And then when you combine that with open APIs like Haven On Demand, some of the other things, very development centric. So it's interesting, you say it's not monolithic, that sort of developer mindset, and it's true. But we've been having a lot of conversations in the Wikibon community around sort of the move from systems of, of record to systems of engagement and now combining those with analytics yep. and big data to systems of intelligence. And the customers that we're talking to are saying that they basically, they can't throw away the old. 90% right. of our revenue comes from there, but we want to create some kind of connection to the new. Yep. Um, do you see that going on in Every the customer day. base? And how are they approaching that from a developer standpoint? Is it still kind of stovepipe? Um, how are they transitioning the development side of things? To I, that? So, uh, Dave, I see that every single day. And where I see it being very successful is they don't try to just create this massive solution that'll take three years, the, the sort of traditional enterprise data warehouse approach. Instead, they start with a data set, probably a new data set. They create an application around it, and they know that they want to bring in the traditional data. They want to somehow join that, to use a database term, but yeah. it, it doesn't have to be a technical join. They want to bring that and marry it to their CRM data uh, for a customer 360 view or whatever it might be. So you start with something small and then you start pulling in the feeds. Um, and all of a sudden, before you know it, you have baked the intelligence as you're describing into the system. And, and I think that's what every organ, this is the data-driven enterprise. How do you bring intelligence to the business instead of forcing the business to go read a report or go to a dashboard, that's not going to work anymore. You need to insert that data and the intelligence right into the decision making so they don't really even think they're looking at BI and analytics. They're just doing their job and they're being informed by that intelligence. And they're putting that capability in the hands of, of business users who can make decisions Affect outcomes. Yep. You know, near real time. Maybe not real time, but near real time. Near real time. Before you lose the customer. A lot of them are real time. You know, before you lose the patient. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's exciting times, and there is a. And I think there is a connection between that sort of data layer and and the cloud layer. And so maybe talk about how HP can connect those dots. Why Why is HP uniquely qualified to do that? Well, so if you think about that transformation, and and this goes back to what I was describing in the beginning. We, most of our customers are not 
brand new green field. They don't have the luxury of being able to say, we want to become a cloud company overnight, or we want to become an analytics company overnight. We have some of those customers, and they've done very well. Um, but for most companies, I think they've got a lot of legacy, and there's a lot of value in that legacy. There's a lot of data value in that legacy. And so what we help them do is manage that transition through our services, through our infrastructure, through our software, in a way that is very pragmatic to them. And so I think that really is a unique value that HP brings. There's other cloud companies, there's other companies that uh, might make infrastructure hardware, there's other companies that offer services. There aren't other companies that can do all three of those things and do it in that managed way that's seamless to the customer. And so an example is, we can take some of our customers and they can deploy on premise uh, their, their solutions with us. And then maybe they take a piece and they burst it out using Helion, using our cloud. Um, and then they maybe burst out another piece. And, and they can just try different ways of leveraging the hybrid. And that's really the value of hybrid. It gives you that flexibility without you having to forgo all the previous investment. I think that's a lot of what we're focused on and what we will be focused on. I, I want to ask you, I, I do. I, every time I hear these debates in the industry, I say, what would Colin think? So I want to ask you about ODP. Now, of course, you, you got you got a little bias with ODP. You got one of your big partners that, yep. that's, that's sort of leading the charge there. Um, but you're also pretty pragmatic and open yep. to, to you know, different approaches. Let the customer decide. What do you think about ODP? A lot of people say it's not necessary. Others say it's game changing. What's your take? You know, I don't I don't really have an, an official take on it. I think that um, there's a role for consortiums to play to help bring some standards together to help make things happen faster. Um, and as you said, you know, HP is an open company. We've always embraced open standards. We want a partner. You know, one of our very close partners is is uh, integral to that. And so, um, you know, we we uh, we're open to it. You know, we're we're sort of in a way, it's it, it's neither here nor there for us. Um, and the most important thing for us, though, is when we talk to our customers, um, we're happy to work with them if they're part of it, if they're interested in it. We're happy to work with them on it. Um, and and that really is our our sort of guiding light: is what does the customer want us to do? We haven't had a lot of customers coming to us saying you need to be part of this. And that's really what drives HP in most of the endeavors that we do. It's customer driven. Um, and so if we're, if we're not part of something, you know, maybe it's because there weren't enough customers driving it, but it doesn't mean we're opposed. It doesn't, you know, we don't really have um, opinions on it, but I think in this industry, um, there is a need to pull together some of this complexity as multiple vendors, and we've got to work together to help these customers get through it because it's a complicated time. There's a lot of different types of standards and technologies, um, and, and we've got to be able to embrace them all and, and really truly remain open to it. What's going on with autonomy? We, we speculated three years ago when um, that acquisition happened, obviously it is what it is, we don't want to go to the historical valuation issue, but it was clear that they embraced and there was, they were sprinkling that around, and people were coming to the trough and taking some drinking from the trough with the big data technology, seen in printers. So, with Internet of Things, yeah. with security, these are other areas, again, big data needs are everywhere. Um, What's the autonomy piece right now? Can you clarify where that's at? It's obviously their own Twitter handle. I still see that out there. They're tweeting away. It's the A in Haven. You guys. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's so yeah. so it's still alive and vibrant and well, and it really is, uh, and it continues to be sprinkled in a lot of different solutions. Both the autonomy solutions that we have, uh, especially around compliance, risk, yep, our idle uh, tech search analytics engine. Uh, so we continue to actually drive that as a core part of Haven, right? If you look at Haven, Vertica and Idle are really the two anchor pieces on, on Haven. And um, it is used in so many of our own applications as well as external third-party customer applications. And so uh, we continue to do that. And no major uh, change strategy or anything, just same old, same no, old. No, I think, you know, I, I think what same we've been doing is realizing we've got all this amazing technology and an amazing team and where else can we leverage that? You know, how do we leverage part of Vertica with Idle? How do we leverage part of Idle with Vertica? How do we leverage parts of both of those in Hadoop? And so you can see in the products that we've been launching, underlying those are these same technologies that we're talking about, from autonomy, from Vertica, et cetera. So um, I think that's going actually very well. Okay, so when you have your meetings with Meg, what does she talk about? She's so so. Give some insight into her management style and what, how you guys get along. 
Yeah. I mean, she sees big data strategic, obviously. Cloud and big data seem to be the centerpiece of the show. Yeah. As well so, as other things, but you know. So Meg, I mean, obviously she's a visionary. At the same time, she's very pragmatic. She knows what we have to do. She communicates incredibly well to everybody in the organization as well as externally. And we're all going down that path with her. And I think if you look at the pillars, big data is one of our key pillars. And you could argue that big data might be underlying some of the other pillars, whether yeah. it's mobility or cloud uh, we or are, security. Yeah, we are saying that. Um, I mean, we are, absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and Meg absolutely believes that. I think she also personally knows this better than a lot of people coming from the background she came from. She's from Silicon Valley. She was at eBay. She's seen the power yeah. of how you can transform an industry. Engines, all that Recommendation stuff. engines, yeah. real time. So, so uh, from my perspective, it's great having that because it makes it a lot easier to to really talk about the importance of um, what the mission is that we're on, especially around the platform and big data. All right, Colin, we're getting the hook here. I want to give you the yeah. final word. What's go what's your um, goals for the show, and what's your outlook between now and? Um, uh, HP discovered London. Yeah, so so most important to me really is bridging that gap between the business and the, the data. And it might not just be the data, but it's also the developers. And so I think we have a huge hand in bringing that gap, closing that gap, as well as helping organizations with some of the greater transformations that are going on, whether it's to a SaaS model, whether it's to a cloud business themselves, or frankly, a lot of our customers are trying to become data businesses themselves, taking some of the data that they have and figuring out how to monetize it. So my goal, you know, instead of talking about speeds and feeds and some of the other stuff that jazzes me up, it's really focused on what can we do to help our customers as Hewlett Packard Enterprise, as services, infrastructure, and software combined together. I think that's what's really going to matter, especially between now and when we go to London. And what the about the big one. data uh, end user con or the uh, developer yeah, slash absolutely. user conference? So come to what's Boston in August. There? What's going on that? It, so same thing that we talked about, but, but very focused on exactly that pragmatism. Listening to our customers, we're barely going to be giving presentations ourselves. It's yeah. all about our customers, it's all about the users, it's all about the developers. So highly encourage you. Of course, uh, the Cube will be there. That. Absolutely. And I got to say for the folks, big data event in Boston, big data, what's the official title? Big da a BDC, Big Data Conference, yep. Big, HP, data, big conference. data Conference, it's phenomenal. The, and it's A talents, A players. But it's, your point about it's customers is right on. It's customer centric. It's always very high quality content. And it's, and it's a good vibe. Thank People are sharing there. Yep. It's, pretty, it's a real developer. Very open. Very, yep. very good vibe. It's yep. fantastic. And we'll do a hackathon most likely right before it again this year. So. All right. Dave, get the Great. legal seafoods at reservations ready <laughs> uh, for us because I go oysters all in. Get the lobster. <laughs> all right, Colin Mahoney, Senior Vice President, guys. General Manager of HP Software Big Data here inside the Cube. We'll be right back. Join the conversation. The live streams are coming up. Go to hpdiscover.social, crowdchat.net slash hpdiscover, or go to the hashtag hpdiscover. Join the conversation. We'll be right back with more after this short break.